Good morning. Quorum being present, uh, the Committee on Government Reform will come to order. This morning we're here to talk about autism. As we learned in our August hearing, the rates of autism have escalated dramatically in the last few years. What used to be considered a rare disorder has become a near epidemic. I think that is a top priority. We have to do much more research on the potential connection between vaccines and autism. We cannot stick our heads in the sand and ignore this possibility. We have been checking into all the financial records of the people at the FDA, HHS, and CDC. Do you believe anybody who is getting funds from Merck or any of the other pharmaceutical companies uh, should be on advisory panels that are making judgments about uh, pharmaceuticals coming from those companies? Or do you believe that's a conflict of interest? I think that's a difficult question to answer. Dr. Offit, you talk about collaboration, I, I guess, with the Merck Pharmaceutical Company. Yeah, I, um, as I um, disclosed in my written report, I've been in collaboration with Merck and Company uh, on the development of a rotavirus vaccine since 1992. They produce the MMR vaccine, don't they? Yes. Why didn't the CDC include, as one of the things they were investigating, the possibility that some of these vaccinations may have caused the autism increase? So would you check that out and let me know? I'd be happy to. Dr. Boyle, for your information, at a public meeting in Brick Township in January of 1997, and you should know this, with CDC and others present, several audience members asked about the vaccines and the possible autism link and they asked that that be checked and I submit that maybe just maybe it's because the pharmaceutical company that manufactures it had some influence on the people that were in that meeting and they said hey we don't want to get into that and if that's the case that's damn near criminal Dr. Wakefield would you like to uh, start this panel yes thank you Mr. Chairman members of the committee it's a great privilege to be here the purpose of my testimony is to report the results of the clinical and scientific investigation of a series of children with autism. Now, I, nothing in this testimony should be construed as anti-vaccine. Rather, I advocate the safest vaccination strategies for the protection of children and the control of communicable disease. I also am here on my behalf representing the children who have come to me for investigation. Do you think, from what you've heard today and what, from what you've seen in your scientific research, that uh, there's a possibility that the vaccines are contributing to the increase in, uh, in autism? There is not only the possibility, there is an extremely high likelihood from all the evidence available. The Committee on Government Reform will come to order. I want you to see what these parents are going through with these kids. I could let you watch more of that, but I think you get the general idea. Now, my grandson and thousands of children across this country were normal kids. And they got vaccinated with multiple vaccines. So we can't let the pharmaceutical companies and our government cover this mess up today because it ain't going to go away. And it's going to cost the taxpayers trillions more if we wait around on it. And for our FDA and HHS and the health agencies to continue to hide behind this facade that there have been studies that conclusively prove otherwise is just wrong, too. To a certain extent, the problem is we're trying to investigate a sacred cow. Dr. Wakefield's research was not expensive. You know, we throw billions of dollars around uh, this town. Uh, what, what's the delay in getting this research done? This fellow Kriegsman came in. And on his own, he has scoped all these kids, and he's seen all the same exact findings that Dr. Wakefield has. Can't you find mm -hmm. some way to just answer the doggone question so that I don't have to keep asking the same question year in, year out? 
Let, let me just ask a question. Doctor, what's his name? Creed Smith? Kritzman? Dr. Kritzman? Yeah, yeah. Now, you've talked to him several times, you said. So you would say what? Let the epidemic spread, or what would you do? Well, I, I would offer an alternative. Okay, well, what's the alternative you're offering him? Uh, no, he never called me back. Well, I'm telling you, he's going to call you back. But let me just say to Dr. Foote, you will be getting a call from him in the next couple of days. I promise you that. And I probably will be on the phone with you in a conference call. Okay, what else do we have here? Thanks, Dr. Weldon. You know, Dr. Minton, Dr. Foote, and Dr. Portier, when you hear those stories, doesn't it bother you a little bit? And you keep telling us, you come up here week after week, month after month, year after year, saying, well, mercury doesn't cause that. But when we read your reports, it doesn't say that. It doesn't tell us anything. This hearing on one in 88 children, a look into the federal response to rising rates will come to order. Sometimes I think maybe outside influences have too great an impact on the scientific research that's necessary to find cures for major problems. Now we've gone from one in 10,000 children known to be autistic to one in 88. It is worse than an epidemic. It is an absolute disaster. Dr. Boyle, my, my predecessor, uh, Congressman Weldon was a well-respected, competent medical doctor, but I gleaned from him uh, some certainty that he felt the Marisol in vaccinations definitely was a contributing factor to, to autism. And I wonder if the CDC has conducted or facilitated a study comparing vaccinated children with unvaccinated children yet. Have you done that? We have actually done a, a number of studies looking at the relationship between um, uh, thimerosal vaccines and autism and other developmental disabilities. So clearly, definitely, unequivocally, you have studied uh, vaccinated versus unvaccinated. Uh, we have not studied vaccinated versus unvaccinated. Well, that was, okay, this, uh, actually, never mind. So just okay. stop there. That, that was the meaning of my question. You wasted two minutes of my time. Um, what steps has the CDC undertaken to ensure the integrity of the research that was uh, performed by Dr. Thorson, uh, who, as you know, has been indicted for misconduct and misallocation of resources? Dr. Thorson, uh, who was a co-investigator on a, a couple of studies that, that uh, came out on autism, um, was really just one investigator. Have you gone back to validate uh, the variety of studies he participated in? I mean, you know this guy is a, a humongous scumbag, one of the most wanted men on earth, and you relied upon him for data <laughs> to, divide, to determine whether thimerosal uh, had a negative effect? So two studies don't... Uh, don't conclude a body of work. The fugitive doctor had been involved in a couple studies uh, with CDC, and, and I have information here that he was involved in 21 of the 24 studies, and I would like to submit that to the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection, to order. I think it's rather interesting that most of the official authorities are taking the position that the increase in autism is unrelated to the uh, uh, to the vaccine uh, use. And uh, one of my favorite expressions that I think is extremely true, the chronicle of man's progress is the history of authority refuted.